Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another episode of the Word of the Day podcast, coming to you, as always, pre-recorded from the RAV4 studios. I'm Jamie Silva. Thanks very much for tuning in. And today's word is pedantic. Wow, you're probably saying to yourself right now, pedantic. What an intriguing word. I can't wait to hear more about it, and I wonder which incisive mind, what person of such discriminating linguistic taste wanted to feature this word. Well, the answer to your question is actually a mystery. It wasn't me, you see. I did not pick this word, and I don't know the identity of whoever did. I know only that someone operating under the alias Roxy4245 left a review of the show on iTunes which read, in part, I think you would be able to create a quirky and fascinating show using the word pedantic as the centerpiece. Well, Roxy4245, I will let you and the rest of the listening public be the judge of that, so here we go. In my opinion, the adjective pedantic means two things, possibly at the same time, but sometimes separately. A. Needlessly technical in explanation or discussion. Or B. Displaying knowledge primarily in order to show off. Pedantry, which is the practice or state of being pedantic, is the province of those who wish to flaunt the fact that they know about something more so than you, and they will demonstrate that by delving into worthless minutiae, splitting hairs that could just as well be left unsplit, saying things like, well, there are dueling schools of thought here, or I found the TED Talk about this left a bit to be desired. Let's go to the online definition, which is, quote, of or like a pedant. Well, okay, that's kind of annoying. Um, Yes, technically, the word for pedantic people is pedants, but including another variation of a word in its own definition isn't very helpful. Like, if I look up the definition of misanthropic, it doesn't just say of or like a misanthrope, even though that would be technically correct. If I knew what a misanthrope was, I wouldn't have had to look up misanthropic, now would I? In fact, one might say that this very definition, by unnecessarily pointing out that pedantic is related to pedant, is itself being pedantic. I didn't ask for this connection to be made, it was distracting, It wasted everyone's time with true but useless details. That is pedantic. And if Google is doing this on purpose, I I actually guess I salute them. Uh, Anyway, let's go ahead and get the official definition of pedant, since we have to go all the way there. Quote, A person who is excessively concerned with minor details and rules, or with displaying academic learning. Unquote. Well, great. This contains both elements of my definition. Pedantic types are both into the minutia, and they're not content to simply keep it to themselves. Now look, I don't want to be too harsh here, even though this word does have an exclusively negative connotation. You see, one person's pedantic comment is another person's fun fact, and much truth, often fascinating, can be found in the details. But on the other hand, it is very important for everyone to remember that there are way more facts out there than fun facts. And while many things are true, not all of them are relevant. So go ahead and share your esoteric knowledge, but hopefully not too much of it, or at least not too much at one time. Also, pedantry is often just in how you say something, just as much or more than what is said. So if you sound condescending and pleased with yourself when informing your friend who has stopped to fix his shoelaces because those little plastic things at the end are getting all frayed, that actually you should really be calling that little plastic thing on the end of your shoelaces an aglet, because that's what it's called after all. And there is actually a difference between the merely functional aglet and the decorative, ornamental, or ceremonial aguilette, which is in turn not to be confused with an epaulette, and you should study up and know which is which, lest you lose a bet in a -a tete-a-tete. I think we can all agree that while one could have conveyed at least some of that information in a friendly and pleasant way, Uh, What you just heard, I think, could be described as pedantic. It was kind of annoying. It was, to borrow from another good definition of the word, ostentatiously learned. And I will probably feature both of those words in later episodes, by the way. Uh, Otherwise, I would explain them now. As far as etymology goes, I'm pretty sure that pedantic comes from the same place where we get pedagogy, which is just teaching, especially, uh, but not necessarily, the teaching of children. In the same manner in which professors, at their most professorish, in their most, I am imparting important knowledge and you should pay attention-ish, they're said to be professorial. So, in the same fashion, are teachers often said to be pedagogical. And this deepens our understanding of pedantry, I think, because there is this feeling, if you're amongst pedantic types, or, or pedants, as we learned, 
that one is back in school, and even if you enjoyed school, you certainly don't remember signing up for classes just now. So why are you being lectured on the niceties of a random topic? Now, it does make me a little uncomfortable. I will admit that one other definition of pedantic is quote being finicky or fastidious, especially with language. Well, that's not good.、Uh, in defense of this podcast, I submit to you that it is not pedantic, or at least not on purpose, because a you're listening because you want to, so presumably you're interested in you know learning about language. It's not being forced on you. And B, remember that our motto is useful words, pleasantly explained, and we work very hard around here to live up to that.、Um, and pedantic people, on the other hand, really don't care much if you find the information they dispense useful, and they certainly don't try to explain it pleasantly most of the time. So, as the jury deliberates on whether or not this podcast is pedantic, we'll do an example or two. And remember that we're dealing with two intertwined meanings, which. To summarize, are fixated on trivia and way too excited to share it with you boringly. Example number one: I don't know what happened to our Ronald," said Mrs. Harwood sadly. "Ever since he came back from college with his master's in nutritional science, he's taken to hanging around the kitchen while I cook and saying all sorts of super pedantic things about my ingredients." Example number two. In a sudden burst of pedantry, Mitchell recited the on-base percentages of the entire Red Sox starting lineup to his younger sisters. Shockingly, this failed to impress them, so he moved on to outline the comparative walks and hits per innings pitched of the Boston bullpen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that will do it for us today. I hope you find this episode.、Uh, let's see, what was it supposed to be? Ah, yes, a、uh, quirky and fascinating, and not too pedantic. And if if you like our muse for this show, the brilliant but reclusive Roxy four two four five, wish to get in touch with the show, suggest a word, get sent some awesome word of the day merchandise, like Roxy will now receive by simply emailing her information to wotdpodcast at gmail dot com. If that sounds like something that you would like to do, apparently leaving a review on iTunes with your suggestion or message is a great way to do it. As always, thank you very much for listening. I'm Jamie Silver.